Hi YouTube. I'm just cranking them out tonight. Um, I have been working on something that I have been wanting to share for a long time now. And um, it's about my experience with the narcissist. Um, I just want to point out that I am out of that relationship. I am happily married. And um, that experience has truly, truly um, made me help shape who I am today. And I want to say that that lesson um, has truly been a blessing. And I can say that is because I'm out of it. Um, and it was a mess. So I just want to share that with you guys. And one of the reasons why I love YouTube is because there's a wealth of information on YouTube from educational items, from anything that you can imagine is on YouTube. And I am forever grateful to YouTube for providing that platform for people to share their knowledge, their ideas, their stories, and, and so on um, from all across the world. Um, I don't get paid by YouTube. Um, so these videos are not monetized. I'm not gaining anything, but I am sharing with you and I hope to share with others maybe I can be of help because I have received so much help so much knowledge so much information from YouTube so this is my way of giving back and what helped me the most with healing and getting out of my situation that I was in with the narcissist was videos that I found not only on YouTube but on social media of other people telling their story their experiences and that has been a tremendous help in the description box I will leave their names and um, one of the gentlemen is currently on YouTube still helping others and I still watch um, his videos and I still do research even though I'm no longer with the narcissist um, narcissists come in many forms it could be a friend I have a girlfriend that was um, narcissistic um, so it doesn't even have to be a romantic relationship um, you can encounter a narcissist a narcissist can be a parent um, a boss a sibling um, so it's not just a boyfriend girlfriend husband wife type of thing and these this is not man bashing um, because there are female narcissists as well and from my research listening to all the stories that I have heard it doesn't matter sexuality it doesn't matter sexual orientation it doesn't matter race um, it doesn't matter male or female their traits and their behaviors are the same it's like amazing to me when you hear someone else speak about their experience or the, or the narcissist that they're dealing with and it's like identical to your situation some may vary um, the narcissist that I was dealing with he was not physically abusive but um, some people have spoke about physical abuse and stuff like that but for the most part the behaviors and all the games and shenanigans that come along with dealing with one no matter like I said economic status race sexuality whether you know they're gay straight it's like they're talking about the same people and it's amazing to me so um a little bit about my background um i'm in my second marriage um i got married at the age of 18 something i do not recommend i come from a christian family and I got pregnant at 18, uh, my senior year of high school. And that's what you did in my family. If, if you got pregnant, you know, it's in the Bible. You don't want to have a baby out of wedlock. You got to get married. And that's the worst thing that I could have done. But my marriage did last 19 years. He was not a narcissist. We had other issues. That's another story. Um, and coming out of that marriage 
my mother used to tell me, um, you know, and she told me, she told me, take your time. You never been by yourself. Be by yourself because you'll jump. What does she say? You'll jump into from the frying pan into the fire. I think that's it. Yeah. From the frying pan right into the fire. And of course, I did not listen. And that's what I did. Um, I met him on a dating site. Um, he checked my profile and um, it was plenty of fish so some of you might be familiar with that and I would look and see who checked my profile I never pursued anybody that just wasn't me even in a normal meeting setting I never would approach anybody um, I don't know I don't know if that's old-fashioned way you know a, a man should pursue a woman I think and I don't knock any women who pursue men do what you got to do um, so I seen him, but I wasn't really imp impressed um, from what I seen. It just, you know, whatever. Um, he didn't seem like my type. Um, but then he messaged me a few days later. And, um, you know, he said we should meet. And it so happens he worked right around the corner from my job. So, whatever. We met a few days after the initial contact. And, um... On the first date, he came in business attire. He was working in financials. Painted a much different picture from what it really was. And let me tell you something about narcissists, if you do not know. They are very good. Um, they should be actors because he really was playing a role. And I remember that first date like it was yesterday. And I felt like I was being interrogated. And I, oh, when I talked to my girlfriends about it, I, I told them I felt like I was like the hot light, you know, the light shining over you and questioning you and stuff like that. So I really felt like I was being interrogated, not knowing that I really was. Because what they do when they first meet you is they got to line you up, size you up. So it isn't like an interview, a very, very... Um, just question after question and what they're doing is trying to get all the information and one thing that I can say that I took away from that experience and knowing that now and I will tell anybody uh, if you're dating and you're, you're going you know you're, you want to meet somebody it's okay to answer questions but if it's one-sided where you know you're giving them all the information and they're not giving you any information to me that's a red flag and sometimes as women I don't know about men but I'll speak because I'm a woman sometimes we become chatty Cathy's and we tell too much and even if you're dealing with a non narcissistic person okay you just don't want to give too much too soon and because let me tell you something it can come back to haunt you even if he's not a narcissist or she's not a narcissist they could throw it up in your face later on so sometimes you don't want to give too much too fast and that's what he did he grilled me he got all the scoop all the business and me chatty Kathy talking 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 I think they do this when they meet you because if, if you've done any research about um, a narcissist, you know, you hear about that mask that they put on. Um, you hear about the role that they play. Like I said, they're very good actors. They do this so they know who they have to be or what kind of man or woman that they have to be in order to get you hooked. So after the first date, we went on a few more dates and stuff like that. Um, I did see a couple of red flags. Um, me at the time, when I call myself desperate, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to say, but um, I'm just coming out of a marriage and never been alone before. And I, I will say that I kind of pushed myself on him as well um he was commuting in from the city um so i would like offer to pick him up from the train station so i could see him and stuff like that I'm so dumb
but I did. And um, one day I picked him up and he was, they're such liars. You cannot believe anything a narcissist tells you. You cannot believe anything a narcissist tells you. Um, he happened to have his friend with him that worked with him, which is fine. So I gave them a ride to the train station and, um, you know, he happened to just meet him on the train, but whatever. Um, cause he probably didn't want to tell me when I offered to pick him up that his friend was going to be there because maybe I would have just skipped it, you know, instead of, you know, whatever. Anyway, he wanted me to take him to the liquor store. And so it was 10 o'clock in the morning and I don't know too many people who go to the liquor store and before we got out of the parking lot. Uh, he drank three nips and the parking lot was only but so big so I think that was a red flag to me but at the time we were just having fun going on dates or whatever like that you know so we were not in a one-on-one -on -one relationship or anything like that or exclusive relationship which let me just tell you right now you never have with a narcissist it's never going to be exclusive but whatever so there were some red flags. Um, I really didn't know too much about him, where he lived. I just knew he lived in the city. Um, you know, he told me at the time, which I found out later was a lie. He only had one child. Um, turned out he had two. Um, so I really didn't know too much about him. Um, and we ended up fast forwarding. Um, again, casual, hanging out. Um we ended up moving together fairly quickly biggest mistake okay um he was in between housing and um aka shelter something i did not know and stupid me uh we had spent the weekend together and um I had said, it came out of my mouth before I realized it. I said, well, why don't you just move in here? Because he was working on Long Island. And that was the biggest mistake. And he ended up moving in. Okay? Fairly quickly. And I will say, what narcissists do, like I said, they size you up, they line you up, um, so they can become the ideal man that you always wanted you know if your ex was uh, uh didn't like to clean uh when they first meet you they're gonna be like mr clean okay spick and span because they're gonna be the what you want what you never had so you think you finally met your soulmate and that's what he was i mean financially when he got paid he gave me half his paycheck um, cleaning, cooking, everything that I told him that my ex did not do, he was doing. Um, even the drinking wasn't really a problem. It would only be like Friday after work drinks, which is normal. Something that maybe I would do. Um, you know, going out to dinner, you know, with my husband or something like that. You know, we have some drinks or whatever like that. So I didn't see any red flags. Like I said, he came from the city. He would maybe go to the city once a month. Um, just, you know, to hang out with old friends or something like that. That wasn't even a problem. I'm telling you, I really did feel like, oh my God, where has this man been? Um, everything opposite. Everything opposite. Um, I just could not, I just not, could not believe it. Um, but I did believe it. And that's just a, a lesson also that I learned, um, which I'll share with you guys in a little bit. And then six months into the relationship, it was like the floor was pulled from under me. Um, he went to the city, which was not uncommon, and he didn't come back. Didn't hear from him, didn't answer his phone. He was gone for two days. And that began the disappearing access, which is something that the narcissists do. They disappear on you. Um, it's really, really crazy. And I, even though I'm a nurse, um, I took psychology. Um, that's one of the prerequisites, intro to psych. I really don't remember them talking about narcissists. 
I don't know. I've been a nurse for almost 20 years, so I really don't know. I probably did learn. I could have learned. But it's just something that I really wasn't familiar with. I've heard the term when people say, you know, um, in a drama movie, you know, narcissistic or narcissist or whatever like that. Um, I've heard the term before, but I never, um, I really didn't pay any attention to it. Um, I, I really did not know anything about it, and I was on Facebook, and um, there was a lady, Quinette. I don't want to mispronounce her name, but I will put her information in the description box. She's a life coach. A life coach. She was doing a five-part series on Facebook live and I watched it and I remember telling my girlfriend that I think Mr. Wrong let's just call him Mr. Wrong is a narcissist and she was like no no he's not like that you know he just has problems I think but he's not a narcissist and one thing I'm going to tell you if you're dealing with anybody or if you're dealing with a narcissist a lot of times we're searching for the answers and we're trying to find out and the answers are in our gut trust your intuition trust yourself and that's one thing a narcissist will break down is your um they'll try to make you doubt yourself they'll try to make you think you're crazy if you ever if you guys are familiar with this you know the crazy making they'll try to make you feel that you're crazy it's you you have a low self-esteem and blah 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 all gaslighting all things to make you think that it's you and not them and um, I was saying to myself no this sounds like him and that began my journey and my discovery and my research about NPD narcissistic personality disorder and let me tell you something this man met the criteria and I there's not a doubt in my mind that um, that's what he was and unfortunately for me and for a lot of people you don't know what you're dealing with and three years into the relationship um, it lasted three and a half but three years into the relationship that's when I found out after three years of the disappearing acts of the lies of the manipulation the gaslighting the future faking oh we're gonna get married or I would marry you tomorrow but you're not ready or I'm telling you they future fake they make promises to to um, to keep you um, it was just a nightmare and let me tell you something these people will drain you um, they love attention that's why you're never gonna be the only one they're constantly looking for attention They'll make you feel like you're the one with the low self-esteem, but they have low self-esteem. Um, I'm telling you, I was through hell and back in this relationship to the point where two and a half years in, I became really physically sick. It's an because you have anxiety because you don't know when they leave or they coming back. Um, you you feel constantly like something's going on. They're not being honest with you. Um, so you always have that in the back of your mind. You're really unsure of where you stand with this person. And they love to have that advantage. Um, it's just something that I will never forget. But I'm glad I went through it. And I know that may sound crazy. But I'm glad I went through it. Because coming out of my marriage, again, he was not a narcissist. But he was manipulative. Um, uh, an infidel, um, a user. Um, <laughs> he had, we had issues, but like I said, nothing like a narcissist. Um, but coming out of that relationship, I just jumped right into another relationship. And um, I think that you don't learn from your mistakes. Um, if you don't learn from your mistakes, you're going to keep repeating. And coming out of my marriage, I didn't give my, myself a chance or time to really know, being that I got married so young, I really didn't have a lot of experience with dating. I didn't have, you know, my whole marriage I poured into to my, my spouse, and I really did not do that for myself, do anything for myself, pretty much. It was all about my 
my ex-husband and my, my kids. Everything went into them. Um, I worked around the clock. Um, really didn't do anything for Erica. So I really didn't know who Erica was. So I was the perfect um, prey for the narcissist. Um, or for anybody else who just wants to use and abuse. And um, that relationship with the narcissist really helped me... Um, realize that not everybody has the same heart the biggest thing with the narcissist is from the beginning it's all fake anything they tell you is fake they tell you that and they tell her that too or him that too again I don't this is not a man thing um, it's a disease that affects men and women um, and that was the most hurtful thing coming out of it because you, 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 you know, you, myself, I consider myself, I have a genuine heart, um, will go above and beyond, um, for that significant other, um, and for somebody who from the beginning had no intentions and, and the lies that they tell, I mean, oh my God, the lies, the lies, the lies, um, it's just very hurtful when you find out that that wasn't true. That it was nothing but future faking and games and just trying to um, string you along. Um, because hurting people, something that I have learned, hurting people hurt people. And narcissists are hurting people. Um, something happens to them, um, usually if they're abused, which he was um, as a child. Um something happens to them and they they go into this defense mechanism and this imaginary world oh my god this imaginary world there it's just too much to tell in this one video um if you are with the narcissist now and you're you're thinking how can i leave how can i leave for me i found the pain of leaving is nothing compared to the pain that you deal with on a, a regular basis dealing with these people you're on a constant roller coaster um, your health is at risk I've read so many people say that they they they're sick um, some people suicidal because um, they will really literally try to make you feel that you're crazy and if you're anything like me um, I will say that God has blessed me with intuition, but you know what? Good intuition, but you have to use it and listen to it. Um, don't doubt yourself. If something is telling you something's not right, nine times out of the ten, something's not right. Um, and if you have to ask yourself all those questions, because I constantly was questioning where I stood with this person. Um, when he spoke about his future, he didn't say when we buy a house, it's when I buy a house. Or one day I... That's a problem. If you're with someone and, and, and it's not us and we, and it's always I, that's a problem. That's something, that's a red flag right there. Um, I, I feel bad because, like I said, I still follow um, these videos on YouTube. Uh, the gentleman that I put in the description box, he does lives all the time about um, this disorder and dealing with these people. Um and you you see the the people and some of them are still there and leave you don't have to be there and I don't give a damn I got to the point before I met my husband I got to the point where I said the hell with this I'll just be by myself I'm just gonna enjoy my girls travel and just be by myself I'm just tired of it I'm over it because after I got out of the relationship with the narcissist I began right away dating and uh, one of them I feel was a narcissist and 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 I've heard stories of people that get out of the relationship with their narc and they get right back in with another narc because like I said until you learn you're gonna keep repeating the same mistakes and um, when you just come out of the relationship you're very very vulnerable and um, you're easy prey um, like I said, it's a lot to share in this video, guys. I, I really want to put together my notes. I started taking some notes because it was three and a half years of hell. And, um, if I could share my story with someone, um, that can help them, um, identify if they're with the narcissist or get away from that narcissist and get out of it, 
Um, and I will say this. I'm free out of my relationship from that person. I'm already moved on. I'm already happily remarried and whatever like that. But it's something that these people, this the they're like monsters. Some people have even called them satanic or whatever. Um, even though you're free, you always are always looking over your shoulder um, because they do stalk you. They do, you know, so I have my social media pages private. And every time I get a request, I'm always nervous because he has tried to uh, request me from fake pages and stuff like that. Um... And then a light, it didn't seem right, you know, like inbox me. And I said, this sounds like this fool or whatever like that. So, you know, because they have a harem. They never let go of none of their exes. I don't care how many years it's been. I will say with mine, he always kept in contact with his exes. So that's one thing I told him when the relationship was ending. Do not add me to that list. Do not contact me again because I don't do that. Once I'm done with you, I'm done. I'm moving forward, okay? But they don't. So he has tried to contact me as recently as maybe like three weeks ago. Yeah, three weeks ago. So these people never really go away. And you're constantly looking over your shoulder. Because they, they it has been said that they feel that um, you still belong to them. Or they still can get you back. You know what I mean? Um... I pray for anybody who's uh, in a relationship with one because it's really, truly no joke. Um, for me, what helped me with the breakup was uh, a journal, um, which I will share some excerpts with you guys. Um, what also helped me is I had all of those horrible emails, like when I couldn't get in touch with him. Um, because mine had other problems. He did have an alcohol and possible drug problem. He, I did find out later on, again, after three years into the relationship that years ago, he really had a bad, bad drug problem. So the whole time, that's what I thought. I thought he was out on drinking binges, which he probably was, but also doing other things. Um, and a lot of narcissists have drug problems tied to it because they're depressed. They really don't like themselves. They never got over that um, abuse that they sustained as a child. So they make this false self. Um, and like I said, hurting people hurt people. So because they're hurting and they don't like themselves, you know, they want to break you down as well. But um, what helped me is reading those emails that I sent him. And it was really sad emails, guys. It makes me depressed even thinking about them. Um, the text message with the verbal abuse, I would read them. Whenever I would have a moment of weakness, I would read these things and write in my journal to let me know how far I've come. And I had to have this come to Jesus talk with myself to let myself know that this is the only alternative. Moving on is the only alternative because you can't stay there. You can't stay with him. So there's no other alternative but moving on. And that's the best thing that I could have done. So, you know, if you're having moment of weakness, if you're having thoughts of maybe they'll change, they're not. They're not. Listen, when I first got with my narc, I would say within the six months, I found some messages from um, one of his son's mother. Um, like I said, he told me he had one. I found out later on uh, he had two. Two kids. Um... She described him to a T. And everything that he did to her, trust me, he did to me. But you know, as a new relationship, you know, the way they paint the exes is they're crazy. He told me that this woman was getting money from the state. She had mental problems. She was a stalker. And come to find out, this woman had her master's in interior design. Very articulate, very smart. See, see, see they lie. They lie. <laughs> These damn narcissists, they lie. They lie. He was the one with the problems. He was the crazy one. And I'm sure I'm, I was probably crazy and all that to whoever he's moved on to now. But um, 
it just really really was an experience so this is the first video that I'm going to do um, it's a lot three and a half years is a lot to put into one video but I would like to start sharing these videos about dealing with someone who has NPD with you guys because I have gotten help and healing and out of my situation okay sorry if it was all over the place but I'm just trying to compose all the thoughts in my mind um, and sometimes they don't come out in order okay thanks for watching guys